Welcome to another video, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just state at the offset that this is the third time that I'm recording this video. So I don't know that it's going to come off as good as it did the first two times where I had some audio issues. The first video, I couldn't hear anything. Second one, there was a loud pitch sound like throughout. So hopefully this time the audio is fine. You can hear me clearly and it won't be an issue. Obviously, I'm going to listen to it before I put it up, but I'm just stating that at the answer just in case we have issues. But thank you for joining me. Today I am going to speak about what is going on with the presidency, specifically concerning black people, the black vote, and entertainers, so called. Right? It often seems, right, and I've seen it over the years, that the Democrat Party brings about these so-called entertainers who are supposedly um, there to bring out the vote. Right in the case of Obama, um, especially I, to my memory, I can remember both terms. You know, there's a lot of entertainers back in him. Um, you know, to vote or die and all this other BS. Um, I guess you know, in Kamala Harris's case, you know, Diddy. And um, R. Kelly are not a viable option right now, right? So you have Quavo um, and you have Meg Thee Stallion. Now, let me just say this. These people do not represent the black community in the way that they are being portrayed as people to, you know, galvanize you to come out and vote. They're not. In, in reality, right, both Quavo and Meg Thee Stallion are essentially part of the elite, right? They make a lot of money, supposedly, right? I don't, I don't know their bank accounts, so let me, you know, let's just leave that there. But supposedly, right? They're in the field of entertainment, and these people make a lot of money. They wear expensive clothing. They're giving clothing to advertise for people, which, incidentally, I don't know what the hell Offset was wearing on stage, but, bruh, he looked like he took that joint out of little Nas X closet or something. I was I was not impressed, bro. I'll keep it a thousand with you. I was not impressed. And then you have on the opposite side, you have Meg in a pantsuit. This dude out here is some type of semi see through negligent. I'm like, bro, seriously? I mean, I know it's ATL, but damn. Anyhow, one of the reasons that I have you know, always sort of, well, not vehemently so, but defended MJ, Michael Jordan, um, for his non, you know, political stance or his non-presence, I should say, when it comes to social issues and things of the sort, is that at the end of the day, his position and the limelight that he was placed in because of the sport that he was in and he excelled in, to me, it does not give him the role of some so-called leader, right? I've heard it several times being said that anytime a society starts to prop up entertainers as so-called leaders, that society is, you know, so on a downward spiral, essentially, right? You had these two people out there, Quavo and Meg Stallion, out there for the Democrats. I'm like, okay, I don't even let my daughter, who's six years old, listen to Meg Stallion. I wouldn't, right? I'd prefer her to listen to some Kanye West, honestly. I can't tell me nothing, but Ye made some good music. But that point aside. Meg the Stallion and the twerking and Anaconda and the songs that she has, that this kind of depravity is what this woman is bringing to the forefront by being brought onto the stage. I don't know her to be an intellectual. Not the Quavo. I'm just saying, you know, no knock on them for not being intellectuals or highly educated or whatever the case is, you know. They make their money how they make their money. But if you're talking about 
bringing people to, you know, bring out the black vote, essentially. You want to bring out entertainers. I would say, you know, outcast, right? If you're looking for a certain type of voter that's been around a while, they've seen the playing field, they know what's going on, they understand the issues, right? They've been around the park a few times. Right, they know the layout of the land. Right, outcast, bring them out there, have them perform Rosa Parks. But then again, you, she's not really African American, is she? Right, and I hear people on both sides of the issue. There's this guy, um, the amazing Lucas. I saw a video of it saying, "Oh, you know, they need to bring the issue to her." and have her address the issue of reparations and all this other stuff. You don't need to make her be holding to these promises and make sure that she's doing it. And then if not, then you're out. And I'm like in my head, bro, like, get off the crack pipe, bro. Like, people lie. Or as House said, if you remember House MD, that very popular show uh, from several years ago, Everybody lies. Politicians, particularly so. I don't know if you've noticed or not, because let's, let's keep it a thousand, right? If the politicians up there in Capitol Hill were doing their damn job, there's no way food, generally speaking, would be as toxic as it is. Right, I kid you not, I bought some green apples um, several weeks ago. <clears throat> I had my kids here with me. Um, <clears throat> they stayed, you know, for intermittent amount of time. My youngest son was here for about a month. My daughter was here for two weeks before that, then she left. She came back. But the apples were there, right? And after both of them left... I went in the kitchen, only then, you know, remembering I had them around. Of course, you know, while they were there, I bought them other fruit and like fruit bowls, mixed fruit and stuff like that. But the apples specifically, I had bought them when school ended. So we're talking about the end of June, right? My son left. It must have been, he left now. It's a week this week, Friday, is going to be two weeks since he left, right? So not that long ago. He left. I'm cleaning, you know, the shelves and stuff, you know, like taking stuff out of boxes, putting in the bag, you know, unused snacks and whatever, chips, whatever is left, you know, putting in the bag so that when they come back, if they come back like in the next week or so, everything will be in one place. And I find these apples. And... I, it, I'd be hard-pressed to tell you the difference between those apples and a damn tennis ball. That's exactly what they felt like. They hadn't turned brown or anything, just sitting there on the shelf. I'm talking about six weeks old, but on the low side. Just there. I threw them joints right in the garbage. The fact that our food industry is what it is is just proof that the people up there are not doing their job the fact that the economy is what it is interest rates inflation right people out of work the job market underperformance in stocks overall certain sense of uncertainty is proof that the people that are there are not doing their job when you have a person like Let's take a glaring example. AOC, right? Who goes to uh, the event, the Met Gala, right? Where it's like 75 grand a ticket. And is up there in some dress looking like roadkill. You see that these people, they want to be, you know, they want to hobnob with the elite. They don't really care about the average person. They want to ascend to the ranks of the 1%. And I don't. I don't have a problem, honestly speaking, with anybody that wants to ascend to those heights. You want to be in a class where you can hobnob with people that are millionaires, billionaires, and, you know, 
get ideas from them, uh, probably partnerships and whatever. Hey, I have no problem with that. Hey, listen, the more money you make, you'll be better off for it. It's not going to solve all your problems, but your bills are going to be paid. So obviously, I have absolutely no issue with that. However, and there's a but, there's a big but, pause, although, hey, I don't mind. But anyways, the but or the however part is, you're supposed to be a public official. That's the problem. You are a public official, supposedly elected by the people in your district, your area. You're supposed to be representing them. So whenever you go out there, these are the people that you're supposed to be fighting for. These are the people that you're supposed to be a voice for. Right. The people that are on food stamps, struggling to pay their rent, lost their small businesses, um, had all kinds of issues during that Cyrus, the virus. Um, you know I mean, nonsense that we had going on. What exactly is the benefit of you going to this Met Gala for those people? For those heathen, unwashed masses, right? I'm not, you know, trying to shame people or anything, but let's keep it a thousand. If you've been on the streets of New York, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. The, those that come to you asking you for change and whatnot, right? The rise in people shoplifting, right? Dudes is coming to steal cat food and dog food and stuff. See a dude run out with a big bag of dog food out of um Dollar General, which coincidentally, you know, DG, y'all could be doing so much better for the staff and just, you know, the general area of the store. But the, eh, that's another topic for another day. But this is the status that some people are at. Roughly three quarters of the population is living check to check, right? People are not making a whole lot of money, right? Depending on the prices, where you live, everybody knows New York is expensive, Los Angeles, expensive, Miami, right? So people have moved from the city, moved down south. Um, who the hell knows what's going on with the housing market these days? You know, I've been looking at places and the suburbs and stuff, the houses, the prices are astronomical, right? You move out, of the, you think it's expensive in the city. Just look at what it costs to purchase a place in the city. Let's say you're trying to buy a house or even just moving out slightly. Seven figures. Seven figures. Now, a million, it could be a million and 60,000. A million and 50,000, but it's seven figures, Right? And you move higher up, yeah, the prices tend to go down a bit and you get more space, but seriously, seven figures, yeah. Especially if you got a big family, right? You're looking for a small place, you know, a couple of bedrooms, a couple of bathrooms, yeah, you not, not going to pay a whole lot of money. But you're talking about a family man, a family, you know, of... Four or five people, yeah. You got to spend some bread to get there. All right, and that's fine, but are you making the money to do it? There's a lot of properties open, a whole lot. People can't afford them. So, what are the people up there really doing for you? You drag out Magnuson and Quavo who I'm pretty sure I'll bet a yard that neither of them know what Kamala Harris policies are for the first, let's just say for the first hundred days in office, let's keep it something light for the first hundred days in office, right? What are the policies that she's going to put in place for you people going out there and trying to get people like myself to vote, which is not going to happen, obviously, because I don't put any stock in celebrity, right? None at all, which incidentally, 
you know, brings me to another point. You know, I don't know the number of people on YouTube or any social media platform that speak about politics that were actually born into it, right? That would be a very small number, right, in my mind. A very Because I've listened to a lot of people talk about it, so obviously they, they're just trying to tread water, right? They, they're trying to tread water, stay relevant. I was born into politics, right? I know what it's like from a youth, right? I know the intricacies of it and, you know, how both sides of the aisle literally have to have a meeting of the minds in order to get things done. And I know what happens when that doesn't happen. And people have all these biases and it's back and forth. Oh, this side is this, so we don't want to deal with them. No, it's really this side that's, you know, they're against the people. I heard Ricky Smiley talking about, oh, he's so tired of black people. This nigga got the gall. Oh, I'm tired of black people. It's just, I'm with her. Nigga, what? So you want me, a grown-ass man, to play identity politics, to vote for this woman and put her in office without a clue, right? Without a clue about what she stands on. Hey, Quavo talking about, oh, you know, I know Kamala stand on business. Nigga, what? What are you talking about? This woman's entire vice presidency has been, she's been like, um, what's that girl's name from um, Fantastic Four? Damn. Reed's, what's Reed's wife's name? I'm, it's slipping. It's like right there. But she's invisible. You, you, you get the point? Reed Richards' wife isn't, that's Kamala Harris. She's been invisible. I haven't heard nothing this woman has done from the time she got in. And I was surprised that she, obviously she got picked for VP. I was like, who the hell is this? I don't know this person. Joe Biden might as well have picked me to run for VP. You know what I mean? Who the hell is this? What have you done? Where, where you been? Oh, my, oh, Ricky Smiley's like, oh, you know, it's just, you got a bucket of chicken and, you know, these Negroes, they want hot dogs. Nigga, what? So we're not allowed to think for ourselves. That's what it is now. Because you some sort of celebrity, you think that people got to follow because you say so. Or because Meg Thee Stallion or Quavo says, hey, I'm with her, so you should get. Nigga, what's her policies? What's she going to do about illegal immigration? What's she going to do about the job market, the economy? Reparations. Any topic. The war with um, Israel, which is supposed to be one of our allies, and Russia. Which is <laughs> a huge threat. Russia ain't small time. You know what I'm saying? They not small time. And I don't know why they're trying to go against the Russians like that. In all honesty, I don't. Like, why? Why are you getting in that? You know, they got Ukraine, another small ass place, right? Israel got their issues with Palestine. America want to be right in the middle of it, and your house not even clean. How are you going over there helping other people clean their house, and yours is in shambles? But I don't know, vote for this person because, yeah, they, they kind of have the same skin tone as me and they claim the same background. So, yeah, I'm, it don't work like that, bro. And anybody that's thinking that way, I feel bad for you. If you're past a certain age, let's say if you passed your, I would say, mid-20s. Right? I know in your early 20s, you know, you still... Most times, more times than not, you're not right, you're not that intelligent yet. You know, you've seen some things, you've done some things, but you, you ain't as bright as you're going to be. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so I understand. 
But um, for the rest of you, right? Some of y'all are just messy as hell. I, I don't know what to say for people that are still out here talking about, oh, you know, Trump is racist and he's this and he's that. Where's, where's your receipts? You can't just come out and make wild claims like that and you have no receipts. Well, you know, he's galvanized racist. No, no. These people got to take responsibility for their actions. I heard about a scenario, a situation that happened in real time. This older white gentleman hit a woman with a bike, right? Assaulted her with a bike. And the woman's husband came to her defense, knocked the old man down, whatever the case is. He hit his head. Uh, EMS was called to the scene. He refused care. Now, this is me hearing it from someone else, right? I didn't actually see it or look into the story. But I've obviously heard this kind of stuff happen before. Either way, he refused care. Turns out this dude ended up passing away. Um, don't know the cause, might have been a um, hematoma, who knows, um, uh, hemorrhage, uh, I don't know, right? Dude's facing, the, the guy who defended his wife, black guy, is facing three years in prison. Now, in my mind, something like that, the only thing I would say that President Trump should do is that he should call out his own people, you know, his cousins and them, right? Because, you know, we all family, but his cousins on his side, right? people that look like him, and let them know that he won't tolerate it. That's the only thing I would say. It won't be tolerated, right? You go after someone because of what they look like in this day and age in 2024, you are a knuckle dragon, Neanderthal, backwater, you know, bottom of the barrel type individual you have there's no hope for you and i'm a person i mean shoot i'm all about hope right for the future for tomorrow because you know every day is a gift but people with that sort of mentality i'm sorry especially those of a certain age like you just I can't help you right if you think me being this color makes me less than you because you're white there's no help for you. Sorry. None. And if you're supposed to get into an altercation because of this exact same thing, they need to throw you inside and throw away the key. That's it. Throw you inside, throw away the key. Make an example out of you each and every time. I'm going to say to my black folk, listen, I don't care where you at in life, but don't feel threatened because somebody thinks less of you because of what you look like right those people are going to be around you may or may not run into them i've seen it on social media so there are obviously some of them around but don't feel like this is going to be your reality don't don't ever think that because then it might materialize Okay, just roll with the right frequency. That's all I can say. You know, I know a lot of my black friends, they have white friends, they have white people that's not cool with them, that would defend them in a fight. I have white friends myself, right? If something was supposed to happen to them, I'd defend them, obviously. Um, so I think for the most part, we have to look at what's really real, right? I'm not into identity politics. I'm not going to believe what you say about the other person just because they're of a different race or a different ethnicity. You put it that way. Right? When all the time I was growing up, I seen him around black folks, around Mike Tyson. Right? And what was the dude with the crazy hair back then? Uh, the promoter dude. Um, Don something I, I'm forgetting his name so it's on my tongue but you know what I'm talking about with the with, with the hair like you know the trolls that they made you know the little trolls that they made the toys for kids he had, he had that crazy you know troll hair and, and gray All right big boxing promoter alright there's so many instances he was, he was with a black supermodel all sort of stuff is he perfect <laughs> 
I'm pretty sure he's not. Right? I don't know anyone that is. Right? But the difference is, is people that, you know, you can tell they strive for perfection. Does he? I don't know if he does or not. You know, but all these other claims about the chauvinist talk and the locker room talk, like, come on, man. You know, I'm a man. I've been around men that talk crazy about even their own women about the shit that they've done to them. Right? And this is people that act right together like a couple, like, how whatever went down, and I'm just here laughing. Right? Now, does every man do it? Obviously not, no. Some guys do, some guys don't. Some guys, you know, they want to talk about their business. All right, fine. But if you catch somebody slipping like that in a personal conversation, you try to use that to, like, galvanize all this. Come on, son. Come on. Right? When you're in a relationship with a, with a woman, that's a personal thing. You're talking about her to somebody else, that's personal. Let's not put that out there and plaster it out there like, yeah, this is for everybody. No. Nah. He cheated on his wife. Yeah, we, we know plenty of people that done did that. Right? Public still, you know, let him slide with it. Bill Clinton. Right in the White House. Democrat. On top of that. Okay. So let's, you know I mean, stop the foolishness, stop the nonsense. Let's deal with facts. One fact for sure I know is that when he was in office the last time, financially, honestly, I did much better in my store online. Why? Because the I'm pretty sure the people that bought from me weren't rich people but they were doing well enough financially that they had disposable income now some completely different ball game man i know a partner of mine friend of mine right known long still got a full-time job and has to work uber and lyft to the tune of roughly twenty thousand dollars from each of them annually to make ends meet and this is without owning a home he has a he has an apartment in um in texas right he does have three kids so you know obviously that plays into it but just to make ends meet a full-time job that honestly pays decent right not six figure but you know quite high in the five figure range and he still got to work Uber and Lyft. That can't be life. Come on now. What about the people that's not making what he's making? You can just imagine what they're going through. Anyways, I made this video long enough. I hope there was no issues with the audio. Um, you could look forward to more content coming from me. I mean, like I said, the last time I was away for a while, so... Uh, it'll take me a while to get back into the groove of things, but I do have some ideas of, you know, stuff that I want to say, obviously, so I'm going to be back on here. I can't say when exactly, but you, you'll be seeing me. All right. So until next time. Peace.